Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, Get to Know SIPE, Structural Design and Analysis Software for Architects, Engineers and Construction Firms. SIPE occupies a leading position in the field of engineering, architecture and construction software and comes with a plethora of design elements to ensure maximum analysis, real reliability and highest drawing precision. And today's webinar presenter, Pablo Hilabert Borona is the Director of Innovation at SIPE and he has a Master's in Architecture and BIM Management. In the last years, he has played an active role in projects related to the investigation of new technologies in the construction field. And maybe he'll tell us a little bit about that, um, these new technologies. Um, I want to show you um, our Novage page where you can find a SIPE solution. Novag is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and no headaches. Check us out at novag.com. We also have a great promotion still going on for this week. Uh, you can purchase a perfect Bluebeam workstation and save. And now, without further ado, let me switch the screen and give the stage to Pablo. We're going to be able to see a screen. Here you go, Pablo. Yeah. OK, uh, so can you see my screen? We can see your screen. And welcome to our first Novage webinar with SIPE and new brand on our catalog. We're very excited. Thanks for presenting today. <laughs> Thank you very much, Barbara. And uh, I would like to start. Uh, thank you, all the team of uh, Novich, because, uh, well, we had a, a very good relationship, and we are glad to to uh, start this new collaboration with you. Okay, so I will start uh, with a short presentation about our company, and then I will show you some of our uh, software in order to show the different utilities uh, you can use. So uh, first of all, uh, well, we are SIPE. We are a uh, software development company located in, in Spain. We have more than 36 years of experience. And uh, in all this time, we have developed more than 150 applications in many different areas. Uh, structures, a uh, build of quantities, energy analysis, uh, building services, and so on. Well, uh, our team is composed by more of 170 professionals, and then we have uh, resellers all over the world. Currently, we have more than 100,000 users in more than 60 countries. Our main market is uh, the south of Europe, Latin America, and Africa, and now we are trying to open new markets like uh, USA. That's why we are here. Well, uh, let me... Uh, start talking a little about uh, BIM. Uh, I'm sure you know what's BIM, this uh, concept, but I will talk about Open BIM. In that case, I would like to start talking about uh, the most important thing of an Open BIM workflow. Uh, that it's not the uh, software we are using, is the data we are defining. So in our case, and in many, all, many different cases of software developers, uh, we have, they have a um, kind of a uh, own environment, like closed environment. We had this solution some years ago and it works perfectly when we work just with our own solution. But we, when we try to share data, to exchange data with some other platforms, uh, we miss a lot of information. So we are not able to do everything. Um, some years ago, we decided to modify this environment and create a new one. Um, trying to work with open formats that in that way we are able to exchange data with many different solutions. So uh, in that case uh, we are working with a centralized solution and in the middle we can uh, we have our platform which is being server center that I will explain to you later. Okay open bin technology was the most important thing in that case, we are talking about public standards, so legible by anyone. So the collaborative workflow, it's like um, um, there are no limits from this collaborative workflow because we can work with many, many different solutions. 
Also, something important for, of working with OpenBeam is the information durability. If we uh, work with, a, I don't know, proprietary format, we are not sure if we are going to be able to open this uh, file in 10, 20 years. Um, when we talk about BIM, we talk about all the life cycle of the buildings that could be 50 years, 100 years, uh, or 200 even. So it's important to maintain this documentation, this data available in all this time. That's why we consider it's really important to work with open data. Well, in our case, we are working with IFC, which is the standard of interoperability between uh, BIM platforms, but we are al also working with some other uh, formats like GLTF, uh, PDF, DXF, etc. So that could be the workflow. So we could say like, okay, one architect uh, is able to generate a design of a building and able to upload it to the platform with directly with their own solution. Then the engineer they will be able to receive this data and according to this data, design the structures uh, part. Okay, as we are working with the cloud, we are able to upload it and get it directly in my design solution uh, software. I can modify whatever I want and I can upload and share this data with the engineers which are in charge of the building services, whatever, waste management, water supply, lighting, etc. So they are able as well of uploading this data to the cloud and share the content with all the different stakeholders of a project, like the builder, the administration, the architect, whatever. So we are working all the time with the last data of the project and like this way, we avoid inconsistencies, we avoid uh, issues uh, between all the different areas of a project. This is the workflow we are defending and we are trying to, to consider. Okay. So talking about uh, um, how the information flows, we can start with a, a physical model, developing a kind of geometry. We have a solution for that, which is IFC Builder is a free solution, so we can define a 3D model with some specific information like this is a facade, this is a window, this is a slab, whatever. But also we can work with some other uh, solutions of the market. Uh, we have Revit, for instance, from Autodesk, and uh, we have a plugin in order to upload this data and download this data from Bean Server. And then we have some other solutions like Archicad, Benlay, Outplan, etc. And then we can upload in the same context the information with a, uh, a software we have IFC uploaded. So with all these different solutions, we are able to start a project and upload this data to the cloud. Then I will be able to load this information with more than 130 applications that we have in Bean Server from many different areas, electricity, structures, energy, telecommunications, acoustics, uh, plumbing, water, uh, urbanisms, etc. Like this, we are able to import this data and create a new one, creating the results of the structures or all the different areas. As we are working in a centralized solution, we are able to see the whole information in the architectural model. If we modify something here, we will receive this modification in all the different solutions. So that's why we are working with the updated information of the project. And this is the, the workflow we are gonna work today, okay? So, if we go to the Novich uh, um, website, we can find different solutions. Each solution includes many different tools, as we will show you. Uh, some of them focus on, uh, of course, design. All of them include the design models, design applications. And then we can find some applications for acoustic analysis, uh, buildings analysis, that includes most of the solution, electricity, fire, HVAC, telecommunications, etc. So depending on where we want to work, uh, which area we want to develop, 
we could be interested in one solution or another, okay? Well, so let's talk a little about Bean Server. This was the theoretical part, and now I would like to start with the practical part, okay? So if I go to Bean Server Doc Center, I can find the platform, it's free. I can log in for free. Uh, right now we have more than uh, uh, 56, um, thousand users and more than um, 126 uh, thousand projects. So uh, it's a lot. So there are a lot of people working with this platform. So I will log in and I will show you what we can find inside. Okay. So this platform uh, includes like three different services. On the one hand, we can find a kind of store as we can find a store in Google Play or Apple Store. This is the same, but working with Beam solutions focus on uh, buildings. So, so here we can find like many, many different solutions, more than 130 uh, from many different areas, like structure analysis, bill of quantities, electrical systems, HVAC, etc. We have to find which one could be interesting for us. So if I go, for instance, I will show you later this one, Open Bing COVID-19. This is a solution uh, that I can import a design model coming from whatever, IFC Builder, Revit, and I can check the social distan distancing between the, our workers, for instance. And even I can apply some different solutions in order to identify which design could be the best. Like this, I can play with many, many different uh, solutions from, uh, I don't know, even from some manufacturers like Toshiba, Daikin, etc. So I can include their solutions according to the uh, design uh, did uh, before. So as you can see here, I can make the calculations as well. Then we have some other service, which is the possibility of uh, finding uh, projects to collaborate. So, depending on my experience, the platform knows what I have, what, which is my my expertise. So, uh, it's gonna offer me some projects that are looking a profile like mine. In that case, I can visualize uh, this project is in Spain, like I am in Spain, and I can visualize the design and I can send a request to collaborate on that project. So we are trying to exploit the uh, social part of working with BIM uh, projects. And the last service and the most important one is the uh, projects, is the, the type of projects. Here, I can find all the projects I have been working on and I can play, I can uh, identify all the different files and all the different data of them. I don't know, if I go to this one, for instance, in this one, uh, CP Beam Experience, uh, it was a demonstration we did uh, last week, and um, we solved this project with more than 20 people from many different countries of Latin America. So here we have the architectural design, but I can start uh, activating, displaying the different elements of uh, the building, like the, I don't know, you know, everything is in Spanish. I will show you another one. Uh, the stairs, uh, I want to see the structure made in Guatemala. I want to see the furniture. I want to see the fire uh, extinguishing elements, uh, the water insulation, et cetera, et cetera. As you can see, we have many different solutions. Even I, I want to see the rebar or I want to see the HVAC solutions. Well. Like this, I am able to uh, check the different layers of my BIMS uh, project. Even as I show you, uh, we can even see the detail of the reverse of this concrete uh, wall we have in the, in the middle of the buildings or whatever. In that case, we have many different menus and uh, talking about the project. This is the dashboard, so here, I can visualize a summary of the project. As you can see, we have some IFCs, some PDFs in the project, some GLTFs, and I can even check this data if I go here. So I can see, I can visualize all the different files uh, uh, 
exported from all the different solutions we have been working on, you know? Uh, let me show you it like this. Each IFC has their own owner and their own size. So I can come here and check, well, all the different elements uh, uh, with all the different information. I will show you better an English uh, project. Let me look for another one. This is another example I use, Bauhaus. It's a popular building. And in that case, I have the architectural and I have some other areas of it like uh, lighting, uh, structures, uh, building services, and so on. So this is the Bauhaus School building. And if I go to the files part, I can visualize the different uh, files I have in the project. So you can see uh, the structure, the furniture, the wireless network, urban use analysis, carpentry, etc. If I go, for instance, to this one, lighting analysis, I can find inside of this IFC many different uh, outputs coming from the different tools. In this one, in this case, coming from a uh, Cypelux. So we can make this analysis or visualize this analysis by space, by the different spaces I have. Or I can, I don't know, visualize the, um, the 3D visualization, taking into consideration the different parameters of the, of the analysis, like the illuminance, etc. So like this with all the different areas. Also, we have here some alerts, some issues generated automatically by the different um, uh, solutions, but also some of them uh, generated manually, as you can see. Okay, we have a problem with the stir and Anne uh, sent me a request or sent to Esperanza a request in order to modify something. So we are making this kind of communication inside the platform. The most important thing is that over here we have the history of all what has been done during the whole duration of the project. So we can identify Okay, who has done that? Who is working right now, etc. And we can also uh, invite new people in order to participate to the project. So it could be a kind of common data environment focus on BIM projects. Here I can invite a user and uh, I can assign a role. And depending on the role, uh, he can he will be able to uh, I don't know uh, Antonio. Next, and I can assign a role, depending on the role, he will be able to visualize more or less information, okay? So, as a general presentation of Bean Server, I think is enough, but now we have to start uploading information. So, uh, how are we gonna do that? So, as I told you, we have to start defining a design project, a uh, geometry. Uh, I don't know, if I am an architect, I will be able to upload this information to the platform and call to my engineers and say to them, okay, I go, I'm gonna invite you, you can get this information directly from the platform. Because in all the different solutions, we have the possibility of importing, updating and exporting data from the platform. So in that case, uh, what we have done is, okay, we have started with a, a 2D, with a template, a CAD template, and we wanted to convert this 2D template in a 3D model, in a B model. In that, in this uh, solution, we have the possibility of defining, I don't know, external wall, and I just have to draw it like this. I don't need to specify all the different layers of a wall because I don't need it. For, a, I don't know, lighting analysis, I don't need to specify the, the different layers of a wall. So the approach of this uh, tool is really basic. If I go to the 3D model, I can see what I have drawn, which is this wall, and I can do it with all the different uh, floors, uh, defining all the different elements of, uh, of this building. So that could be the first step. Next step, 
let's export this data to the platform and import it from the different solutions. So I will go, a kind, I will show you really briefly main, some of the different solutions we have. Uh, if you want to go deeply, you can go to our channel of uh, SIPE and look for the name. I don't know, let me, uh, I will show you some of them. So you will find a one hour of presentation in English, Spanish, and some other languages of each solution. So you can go deeply in order to improve how they work. So next step, let me show you, I'm an architect, for instance, I'm the, with the profile of an architect, and then we have another solution, which is this one, Open Beam Model Checker. So what happened? Because we are working with different models coming from different solutions. And usually we have to check that everything is working right. For that purpose, we have Open Beam Model Checker. What we can do is, okay, let's see what we have. In our case, we have the architectural model, but we have also the structural model. We have the furniture, we have the HVAC, we have the lighting, we have the plan bin, and all the different, uh, well, building services of, of the project. So I will be able to check everything over here and I can create some issues and export them to the platform. So they will be, they will be, they will receive a kind of warning like this saying, okay, you got an issue coming from Pablo Gilabert, which is the uh, B manager of the project. So I can select different elements, create a new, a new issue, whatever. A problem here with this and with this, whatever. And as in a BIM project, each element has an ID, this element will be lighted in the other platforms, in, in the other solutions. So I can now assign uh, the problem to the people who define the wall. And I can include a comment. So uh, at the end, I'm creating new issues. This as a, is a possibility, creating issues manually, but I have the possibility of creating issues automatically. So I have a model here of class detections. Let me show you like this. In that case, okay, uh, I will be, I create a rule and I will say, I want to check if there is any problem between the structure and exactly between the beams of my structure and I don't know, the sanitary system, but just the pipes, accept, and I will run it. And the software is gonna identify if there is any uh, clash between all these different elements. In that case, we identify 59. Maybe some of them are really issues, but some other are not issues, are problems of whatever. So here we can find a, a pipe with a beam. So I can consider it like an issue. So uh, I can select them and define, okay, what we have an issue. And I can go checking all the different elements in my building with that problem. If I go here, I can identify some other problems I did before. Problems between, between walls and the HVAC solution. So I can see here. Here, we can consider that a problem or not, because we can make a hole during the construction uh, moment, and that's all. But we can identify that, for instance, in that case, we have a box, we have a machine inside of a wall. So we have to move this machine a little bit about to one side. So this is really important in order to coordinate the project. Well, so uh, like this, we can continue playing, we can continue creating new rules. We can even make some uh, uh, point, some descriptions in, in the project. Like you have a problem over here and we have a problem here between this distance because I was expecting one meter and then we have 81 uh, centimeters. So it could be something like this. As you can see, all the different information, all the different tools are able to export and import that. What we are doing right now is if I export, we have a solution here, which is that is a synchronizer, it's been server center sync, which is checking all the time if what I have in the cloud is the same that what I have in my computer. It's like Dropbox or Google Drive, okay? The most important thing is that what we are sharing here are open formats is one IFC. 
I'm not sharing the proprietary uh, file of my uh, software with all my know-how and all the different elements. I am exporting the results of my calculation. Okay. Okay. Following like this, I can make many different of calculations. As I told you, this is a for for instance a Revit model, and I export the Revit model to Bean Server, and I import it to this other solution which is OpenBeam COVID-19. This is a free tool in order to check the uh, safety against the spread of COVID-19. Well, in that case, what we uh, import is an IFC with the design. And now I'm gonna consider if all my workers are safe according to their position, according to the different paths of my offices, for instance, my restaurant or whatever. So I can make a kind of analysis and I can visualize if I have some problems. So in that case, for instance, I have a problem because I have to work is really close. This is because I decided that the uh, social distancing, interpersonal safety distance is one meter. I can modify it two meters. I can even uh, consider if I have a mask, uh, it could be one meter. If I don't have a mask, it's to be uh, two meters, for instance. So I can make the many different uh, scenarios. Like this, I can check all the different floors I have in my, in my building, and I can start including new elements. Okay, so let's now put, I don't know, a separator over here. It doesn't have many sense, but I can, take it in consideration and I can calculate again and now there is no problem because we have a, a physical separation between uh, both of them. This is a possibility also depending on the standards we can consider introducing uh, elements like I don't know uh, beans, uh, I don't know uh, hydroalcoholic gels, um, masks uh, or gloves I can include Okay, I want to put some, uh, the possibility of uh, finding some gloves over here, or taking some gloves here or whatever. So with these conditions, I can consider, I can check if we are a complying with the standards of a country, for instance, you know? Well, like this, then we get the bill of quantities of all the elements uh, we have used. Uh, you know, adhesive sign for root, we can see it over here metacrylate separator, we have one over here, we have another one over here, fixed hydroalcoholic gel dispensers, well, all the different we have used in, in my project. So like this, I'm gonna show you different areas. Let me show you the different solutions we have in uh, Novetch. So we have a possibility here of comparing all of them. Right now, we are offering six different solutions. Building, fire, HVAC, electricity, telecommunications, and acoustics. And some of them include some solutions, and some of them include some others. As you can see, the possibility of defining the 3D design is included in all of, in all of them. So IFC Builder and some other um, softwares for defining, I don't know, elevator, elevators, stairs, furnitures, etc., are included in all of them. Then if I uh, go to each one, I can get the specific, specialized solutions, like the second one, fire analysis. Let me show you a little about this one. So if I go to pin server and I go to the store, I can write, I don't know, let me identify all the different solutions about fire. For instance, so I will uh, write fire, fire protection, and I can identify all the different solutions we have. Some of them are focused on some specific regulations, like the, this one for Spanish regulation, this one for French regulations, but then we have some other with international regulations or American regulations. Like we can find cyberfire hydraulic systems in order to design the hydraulic fire extinguishing installations of, of buildings. So let me show you this one and this one, fire dynamic simulation. In this case, hydraulic system, this is the, uh, you know, in all our solutions, 
we work in the same way. We have different elements to introduce over here. We have the a kind of navigator over here, and then we have a 3D viewer over here and a 2D viewer over here. So in that case, we uh, receive the, this is a hotel, the design of a hotel, and I can define all the different elements of sprinklers, for instance. And I can consult the checks of the calculations we are doing. I can uh, fix some uh, protection areas and I can modify whatever I want. And I can introduce these elements in the, uh, in the different projects. Once I have done that, I can check if everything is right or we have some problems. Now we can see everything is right with the uh, design and the calculation. So I can see the 3D view. I will display the beam model and I will identify all the elements I can I have included here. So here we have a, 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 some pipes with a pump with some elements and even I can visualize some kind of animations of the spray pattern we have depending on the sprinkler selected. Okay, so if I click in the information, I can even select, I can even see which is the size of the pipe and the friction factor of each element, even of the different sprinklers I have selected. You can see here, this is a sprinkler, this is the type of a sprinkler and so on. Over here, I can also generate a lot of different reports, a lot of different of plans with the whole information of the project. So material leaks, project with all the justification. So as you can see, we have developed 35 pages with all the different analysis, all also considering the flow test summary sheet and so on. So we arrived to a huge level of definition in all the different areas, you, can, you know? So uh, like this, I can continue defining the fire, fire uh, extinguishing uh, solution. I can introduce many different of them. And uh, let me show you another solution. Uh, if I go to Cyberfire FDS, now depending on the hydraulic system defining and the definition of the, uh, the design project, I can even generate a, a a video in order to identify how the smoke is gonna be distributed in our in my building. In this case, we are using the uh, FDS, the Fire Dynamic Simulation uh, Engine Solver, uh, defined by or developed by the NIST from USA. So we can identify. Okay, we have a fire over here, and let's check when the sprinklers are gonna be activated depending on the alarm and depending on the distribution of these sprinklers. We can even identify the temperature uh, at, in each moment of the, of the fire. So I can make some kind of a scenarios in order to identify which is the best hypothesis, the best solution, uh, design solution, you know? Okay, let me continue with some other uh, possibilities. In that case, we have HVAC, HVAC, we have many solutions as well, and I will show you two of them, you know. Here we have a solution, which is this one, is a cypetherm loads. And in this case, what we are going to do is identify which, which are the thermal loads of uh, my building, depending on the different, uh, the design, the orientation, the layers, and the location of my building. So, so we bring from the beam, solution, bring software, uh, all the different definition of spaces. And here we can say, okay, this is one space. This is the cooling temperature, heating temperature. Uh, we have some kind of ventilation, some lighting uh, 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 loads, etc. So we can define everything. We can also define, okay, in this case, we have two different facades. This one is, the composition is like this. We have some layers and the thermal description is, okay, we have a U value of this one. The same for all the different elements of the building. So I have to specify all this data in order to make this calculation. If we modify something in the B model, no problem. We can update it and calculate it again, okay? 
Next step, thermal loads, okay? So first of all, we have to specify where we are. So we have implemented the ASRI information, ASRI weather data. So I can say we, can, we are in, I don't know, North America, and then we are in United States, and here we have some stations. So I can go to, I don't know, uh, Virginia or Washington. And like this, we can import the real data of this weather, that, this weather uh, station. So I can make the calculation according to the uh, temperatures and the humidity conditions of each place. In that case, I'm gonna create two hypotheses. One is considering the different offices and the other one considering the different machinery rooms. So I can update the, the results, taking into consideration all the calculations. And here I can get different uh, outputs. I can modify, taking consideration the hourly cooling log progression in January. So here maybe we have a problem at this uh, time and maybe we can Mm, modify the different uh, uh, systems we are using in order to improve this definition. Let me check how it works in August. So in August we have a peak over here, so maybe we need some kind of uh, shade, some kind of shadows at this time. And we can do it for every different space and even from every different wall. In order to identify the cooling load of this wall, uh, the temperature and solar irradiation, so you, we can see, like, according to the orientation, we get direct solar irradiation between 10 and 5 uh, p.m. So we can play with this information. Also, we can export this data with all the thermal results, thermal load results of different depressing, different pressings and import it from many other different softwares. I don't know, for instance, I want to solve this solution or this uh, project with Fujitsu systems. So I can import it over here and now consider that, okay, we have this space with this thermal load analysis calculated. So in that case, we need to include one machine uh, able to create a one, uh, uh, 150, uh, 49 uh, watts per square meter. So I can come here and select which is the best uh, solution from uh, um, Fujitsu in order to solve the, the thermal load, the demand needed in this, in this pressing. So like this, I can make the calculation. Let me show you the 3D view. I can make the calculation in order to define the different systems of HVAC in my project. Uh, I will put it like this. So I can go inside this building and check how it, this has been included according also to the design of the, uh, the sale, you know. Well, we can visualize also the schema. It, this is generated automatically. So we just have to draw, we just have to define where are the machines, where, we, where we want to include the machines. And the software is gonna uh, give us some warnings if this installation has not defined it correctly. Uh, like this, we can create like some reports with the whole information, with the material needs and so on. This uh, software, all the different softwares we have, has been checked by the different uh, manufacturers. We have Fujitsu, we have Panasonic. So if I go to Bean Server and I, I do the same. So let me check HVAC. HVAC. We have some generic ones and then we have some other from manufacturer systems, as we can see here. Let me show you. Yeah. These solutions include the real uh, objects from, I don't know, some a polyterm for radium floor. Uh, Soleri Palau from ventilation systems, Fujitsu, 
eh, Midea, eh, Giacomini, Radian Flirt, well, Mover, Panasonic, Schneider, well, many different eh, manufacturers. So we can use it like this. So let's continue. Uh, I don't want to be really bored, but I will continue with some parts and I will finish the, the presentation. Electricity, telecommunications, acoustics. So let me show you some of the electricity and telecommunication solutions. I don't know, uh, electricity. So first of all, we need to define the lighting. So here, in the same way, we can include, okay, I want to introduce one light in my place with this distribution, uh, or maybe it could be a fixed down light with, I don't know, this path and this definition of lamps. Or I want to import the IES uh, formats coming from Philips or whatever. So I'm able to import this data and include it in the project. And then when I have done that, I can make the calculation and I can identify all the different results of this calculation in order to check if we are accomplishing the standard or not. I forgot to say that, for instance, in the Cyberfire hydraulic system, I'm able to modify the standards I, we want to check. In that case, we can say, okay, I want to check the NF NFPA 13 code. I will say yes, and automatically we will work with all the information included in this standard. I don't know, all the different criteria for accessory measurement, all the different criteria for types of sprinklers and so on. So with the light, we can do the same. We can specify where are the limits in order to, to uh, accomplish with the different standards. Then we can check contour lines. We can we have different types of representation. We can visualize the illuminance, the daylight factor, because we can make a, a light, a natural light analysis. We are working in that case with a, the Berkeley a solution, the radiance a matrix, which is quite popular all over the world. So the results are really a, a accurate. Okay. Like this, I can work in many different ways. We have then electricity solutions. We have also, I don't know, this is another solution to check if the Wi-Fi signal is arriving arrive, arriving um, in a proper way to all the different parts of my buildings. No? You know, Wi-Fi is really important right now. So architects and engineers, we have to consider it. So we can include emitters, we can include receivers, and we can visualize the different uh, uh, signals, the results of these signals. So maybe we need to modify the position of an emitter and include it in another part. You know, so like this, we have many solutions. I will recommend you to come here, go to electricity part, and here we have a list of all the different solutions included. You know, IFC Builder, some other from uh, design, and here, Cyple Core, in order to uh, design the electricity installations and create this kind of uh, plants, networks, switchboard, lighting, uh, in order to decide against lighting risk. So we have a lot of them. Okay, I will continue with uh, some information about the structures. So here we have a through beam design, uh, which is another solution for structures. Maybe we will talk in another presentation about that, but I would li like to share that we have structure solution, considering the information of uh, the ACI, uh, uh, the standards from USA, and considering all the different uh, information with the concrete uh, of columns, uh, types of uh, rebars and so on. So here we can check the different results of a beam project as well. And we can go into the detail of defining also the different rebars of the different elements. You know, here we have a wall and then I can modify the uh, uh, different elements of this rebar. I will say, let me check what happened if we have a 10 uh, diameter. So I can check if everything is right and I can calculate 
if everything is a compilation with the different standards, you know? The same for all the different uh, uh, software solution we have for the structures, you know? And well, let me show you a, a couple more of them. Like, I don't know, uh, plan bin and waste management, the same, we bring the bin solution, the, the design. Also, uh, when I import it from a bin server, I'm able to select if I want to import some other data. So in that case, I decided, okay, I want to import the architectural solution, which is this one, but I want to import also the HVAC solution because, because I want to check if there is any clash or if there is any problem between the uh, HVAC solution with my plan B solution. But I want to import also the structures because I want to check if I have a collision with a beam or whatever. So I want, I can see everything which is in bin server. So like this, let me display the architectural model. I'm able to visualize my solution and even to visualize some kind of uh, animations according to the velocity, real velocity of the different pipes I have defined it, you know, defined depending on the, on the different parameters, you know. Well, uh, like this, I get the results with the different uh, information. I can modify always everything. And once I have done the results, I can export this data to share the whole information, quantities, reports, drawings, with the rest of the projects. So at the end, what we are doing is what I show you here. We, we, we get the design information and then we export again the information to the other stakeholders, the other, the other collaborators, okay? Okay, uh, so I think this is enough. <laughs> I have shown uh, a lot of different uh, solutions. I will invite you to, to dive in Bean Server in order to check all the different solutions we have and identify which one is the best one according to your uh, knowledge and your, your needs. And then let me finish uh, showing you that, okay, like this, we have desktop solutions, but you can download as well free uh, mobile solutions. We have a solution in order to visualize all this data from Bean Server Doc Center in your mobile or your iPad or whatever, but also to visualize this data in augmented reality. So we can get this information and display it in the in the in the real place or in my in my uh, table of my office in in order to visualize how it works let me show you a short video of that uh, so let me have some videos over here mm. well let, mm -hmm. let, like this uh, for instance, this is a, a, a model coming from coming from Bean Server, and I can visualize it in in the real place. In that case, we have the structure already built it already uh, in the place, but I can check where we have to uh, locate the plan bins of the HVAC installation or whatever. I can check. I can even walk uh, uh, in the building or whatever, you know, with all the different elements of my of my building. Uh, like this, I can do it with all the different softwares we have. In that case, this is an Archicad uh, model. We upload the Archicad model to Bean Server, like this, and then we can visualize this Archicad model. We have not worked with SIP in any moment uh, in, uh, in our table of our office in order to, I don't know, share it with our owner or, or our client, sorry, or, or whatever. And in that way, we, are, we have developed also virtual reality solutions. So we can also uh, play and have a kind of real experience with a uh, helmet or some glasses, you know, smart glasses. And well, uh, I know I talk a lot, a lot uh, about a lot of different things. It was, as I told you, a kind of testing menu. And anyway, if you have any questions, you can contact me 
by uh, my uh, the social networks, LinkedIn, Twitter, or whatever, or by my email. And uh, well, I hope I hope you like it. And uh, well, I would like to thank you again to the uh, Novich people uh, to uh, give us the opportunity to share our experience with all of you. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Pablo. That was great. What a what a great run through we had. And um, I want to thank everybody for attending. And I want to encourage everybody to check out SIPE uh, or SIPE. Uh, on our website, we have uh, different solutions. And uh, as you can see, it's so packed with incredible tools. We're very excited to feature them on our catalog. So. Um, as, as you can see, you can watch video and you can ask us for information. We're always here for you on the phone. I just also want to remind you that I'll be, I'll be posting the recording of, of this webinar on our YouTube and Vimeo channel. So if you want to show it to colleagues or your bosses or watch it again, uh, just search for Novag. Thanks for a wonderful presentation, Pablo. And uh, very happy to have you, uh, you and Saip on board. And thanks again. Have a great rest of the day or night. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.